गुड मॉर्निंग डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दी सेकेंड सीरीज ऑफ दिस वीडियो लेक्चर्स आई एम कमिंग विद द डिज़ाइन ऑफ द अबर्टमेंट्स दब स्ट्रक्चर विच सपोर्ट्स द एंड ऑफ द सब स्ट्रक्चर सुपर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ अ ब्रिज एंड लेटली सपोर्ट्स द एम्बैकमेंट सर्व एज एन अप्रोच टू द ब्रिज देर आर थ्री टाइप्स मेसनरी प्लेन कॉन्क्रीट एंड रेनफोर्स कॉन्क्रीट द कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ अबर्टमेंट्स बेसिकली आर द ब्रेस्ट वॉल to support the dead load and the live load the wing walls which is the extension of the breast walls it only retains the backfill then the back wall or the call as the dirt wall it prevents the flow of material from the field to the bridge seat the few of the forces which are going to act on the uh, this abutment is the dead load due to the superstructure live load on the superstructure self weight of the abutment longitudinal forces due to the tractive effort breaking temperature variations and concrete shrinkage then we have the thrust on the abutment due to retained earth it it, it complies to the bridge clause 714.4 and it is required that all abutments should be designed for live load surcharge at a height of 1.2 meter from the earth fill then method methodology or the objectives to be attained retained attained are the design should be based on assumptions of preliminary dimensions depending upon superstructure substructure and the foundations it has to be checked for stability against overturning base pressures and sliding the factor of safety against overturning should be greater than 2.0 eccentricity of the resultant of all the forces on the abutments should be within 1/6 of the base width so, uh, central one uh, central 1/6 of uh, of the base width so that there is no tension at the base then maximum stresses should be lie uh, maximum stresses should be less than the safe bearing capacity of the soil the factor of safety against sliding should be more than 1.5 to understand this design i have taken up an example the dimensions are in your picture you can see i have the heel there this is the component heel let me show you with marker uh, this is the heel then we have a toe a point o is marked this is the you can see the point of consideration i have a breast wall then i have a dirt wall which was i talking about this will not lead of the earth fill to reach the t beam deck slab this is the approach slab the dimensions are given as the thickness of the approach slab is 300 mm these are dimensions are all in mm then i have this as the 1300 the you can say i will make up some sections then i have another section of 300 mm over here this is the heel again of heel with toe i have the total as 4800 so these are the dimensions of the abutment for the example to be studied for the design some data is given to us the mm, it is it has to be designed for a two t a uh, t beam two lane six bridge effective span of 16.1 meters the overall length will be 7.2.6 meters backfill is of a gravel with phi the angle of repose as 35 degrees Unit weight of backfill is eighteen kilonewton per meter cube. Then angle internal internal friction angle of internal friction is seventeen point five degrees. Approach slab I have already told you it is three hundred mm thick. The live load is considered uh, on the super from the super structures per running feet of abutment wall, and has been dead load is one hundred nineteen kilonewton per meter. Live load is eighty five kilonewton per meter, and this for a width of eight point five meters. Bearings. are used as neoprene bearings neoprene bearings elastomeric bearings sizes 320 by 500 by 65 mm it is embedded with five plates of 35 uh, 3 uh, mm thick and 6 mm clearance on both the sides in plan the elastic modulus it is taken as 1 kN per meter per mm square g then for the case the this is the you can see the self weight of the abutment The abutment has been divided into five sections: one, two, three, four, five. In clear shown in your picture, one, two, three, four, and five. The pressures are going to be some component of vertical force from live load surcharge and the approach slab. Then there will be some component due to the horizontal components due to this live load and uh, approach slab. You can see over here. This is the HL. This is the D. This pressure. diagram is due to the active earth pressure due to the earth fill so we'll see then i have a dead load and a live load acting this is the bearing so 
wherever these components are acting i am going to have some horizontal components and vertical components with their lever arms so i have a table with me which i have compiled including all the forces this is these are the details of the forces we will discuss these one by one <coughs> you can see that these are all the forces whether vertical whether horizontal similarly i have bifurcated them as vertical horizontal their lever arms what for vertical force the lever arm will be horizontal for horizontal it will be vertical you all know that then i can calculate i can multiply this component by this component to have my mv that is the moment in the vertical direction then moment in the horizontal direction this is all moments are about point o the point of concentration we have earlier talked about so this is the point o at the end of the toe to start with i will not fill this table right now this table will be used when we are going to discuss all these forces one by one first is the longitudinal force the longitudinal force the longitudinal force first case is force due to braking the force 70r wheeled vehicle has been considered you all know that wheeled vehicle has a total load of 1000 kN 20% has been taken so this makes me a total load of 200 kN due to braking this is all due to bridge code bridge code gives us that for braking it should be 20% this force is acting at 1.2 i have already told you at the uh, road level so force on one abutment will be by 2 so there are both the, there are two abutments at the end of the spans one this side one that side so 100 kN is shared by one abutment wall horizontal force per meter of the wall i have 8.5 meter as the width so 100 kN by 8.5 gives me 11.8 kN per meter as the intensity then i have force due to temperature force due to temperature variation and shrinkage for that the moderate climate has been assumed as 17 degrees celsius with the variation coefficient of thermal expansion has been taken as 11.7 into 10 raised to the minus 6 degree per celsius so you get the strain due to temperature as 1.98 into 10 raised to the minus 4 strain due to concrete shrinkage according to the clause in the bridge code 220.3 it is 2 into 10 raised to the minus 4 when you combine these total you get it as 3.929 into 10 raised to the minus 4 as the total strain you all know that strain is what it is the the change in length upon the original length so i can now calculate my horizontal deformation the horizontal deformation of one abutment gives me 3.92 uh, 989 into 10 raised to the minus 4 into the original length of the span that is 1 uh, 17.26 i had has my overall length you can see over here the overall length is 17.26 so this has been used over here by 2 so each abutment has an horizontal deformation of 3.4 mm <clears throat> then i can calculate this uh, this horizontal deformation can be transferred to the strain in bearing it is it is transferred as the total deformation that is 3.44 divided by the elastomer thickness thickness the size of the this uh, bearing i have taken as 320 by 500 into 65 so 65 is the you can say thickness of this it is embedded with five plates 3 mm thick so that has been subtracted from here so 65 minus 5 into 3 and 3.44 divided by the thickness of this only the bearing gives me the strain in the bearing that is 0.069 so i can calculate the horizontal force due to strain in longitudinal direction at bearing level so this is the formulation it is 1.1 into the strain into g into area of plates in bearing into number of bearings divided by 1000 into width 1.1 strain you have calculated over here 0.069 into g has been told to us it is g is 1 kN per meter uh, per mm square so same has been used over here the area of the plates in bearing it has been told to us that 6 there is the 6 mm clearance in plan so clearance means uh, on both the sides above and top so 12 mm will be subtracted from the size of the bearing so that is 320 minus 12 that gives me 308 and 500 minus 12 gives me 488 so same has been used over here so 308 and 488 number of bearings there are 3 so uh, this gives me 4 kN per meter as the intensity of the horizontal force due to strain in longitudinal direction at the bearing level next we have this was the horizontal then we have the vertical reaction vertical reaction due to breaking so vertical reaction due to breaking gives me 
on what one abutment gives me 200 kilonewton was the total so 1.2 plus 1.3 1.2 is the level of the road the uh, it was told to us that this is going to act at this force is going to act at 1.2 meter above the road level so 1.2 plus 1.3 that's you go to the section uh, above the bearing level so i show you the, again the section so this is 1.3 1.3 plus 0.3 plus 1.2 uh, uh, above the road level so this makes it to so this value 200 into 1.2 plus 1.3 plus 0.3 divided by 16.1 is the effective span divided by width that is the area so this gives me 4.1 kilonewton per meter this is the vertical intensity via vertical reaction at one abutment <coughs> next intensity is the earth pressure so first i'm going to talk about all the intensities then i'm going to fill the table earth pressure you all know there are two earth ty types of earth pressures active earth pressure and passive earth pressure when you look upon the figure this portion will will uh, represents for active earth pressure this toe portion will give me the passive earth pressure for this case passive earth pressure has been neglected active earth pressure has been in taken into considered so active earth pressure when you look at the pressure diagram so this is the pressure diagram so i have the active earth pressure i want to calculate this active earth pressure then i will calculate this this lever arm which is 0 0.42 h this you all, all this uh, this you have read all in your geotechnology so active earth pressure is given by p is equals to 0.5 k a w h square the values have been given to us theta is 90 degree phi is 35 degree <coughs> z is 17 internal inflection this is angle of repose this is the angle so uh, this uh, uh, surcharge fill is zero degrees so you don't have any surcharge so this angle is zero degree tilt is zero degree so ka comes out to be when you all fill these figures in that equations of earth pressures it comes out to be 4.496 so height of backfill below approach lab is 5.6 meters this is from the dimensions when you look at the dimensions you see this so this is total is 5.6 the total from the below the approach lab to the base of the slab of the abutment hence the active earth pressure comes out to be 0 0.5 into 0 0.496 into this is the density of the earth fill into 5.6 square gives me 140 kilonewton per meter per meter height above the base you have this as 0 0.42 h so 0 0.42 h gives me a distance of 2.35 meters this is the correction over here it is 0 0.42 h so 0.42 into 5.6 2.35 meters passive pressure in in front of the toe slab is neglected <clears throat> then i have the live load surcharge and the approach slab live load surcharge equivalent height of the earth for live load surcharge is 1.2 meters this has been taken it has been given to us horizontal force due to live load surcharge will be then 1.2 into 18 is the density into pressure into the height 5.6 so this gives me 60 kilonewton per meter horizontal force due to the approach slab it is the thickness of the approach slab is 0.3 here here over here so this gives me 0.3 into 25 i have taken the unit weight of concrete 0.496 ka and 5.6 is the again the height this is will be clear by the this figure so this is the HL this is due to the approach slab this is due to the surcharge so you can both calculate by this <clears throat> and the lever arms will be at the center so height total height is 5.6 so it will, the horizontal forces will be acting at 2.8 from the toe yani from this point so you have to keep this in mind when you're going to fill the table of this so then i have the vertical these are the horizontal forces due to the surcharge and the approach slab then we will have vertical load due to the live load surcharge and the approach slab vertical load 1.2 into 18 uh, this uh, 18 is the intensity then 0 0.3 into 225 live load this is due to the surcharge 1.2 meters above so this is taken as 1.2 into 18 this is 0.2 is the thickness of the approach slab into 25 
into 2.6. So this gives me the total vertical load acting downwards. That is 75.6 kN per meter. Then I have weight on the earth on heel slab. The weight on the earth on the heel slab can be calculated again from the figure. So what is what will be the weight? So 18 is the intensity of the load and it is going to act for 5.6 minus 7.5 meters for a distance of 2.6 meters this value so what is the area to volume 2.6 2.6 into this into the uh, you can say that per, for per meter into the intensity of the earth uh, uh, whatever the gravels is we have used unit field of bakefire as 18 kilonewtons so this gives me a vertical load of 18 into 5.6 minus 0.75 into 2.6 so it is 227 kilometer per meter when we continue this now these are the checks which has to be applied so before the checks let us go to the table and again compare these forces so when you make a table so first case is dead load from the superstructure so dead load from the superstructure we have taken the dead load as 1 119 kilonewton per meter so I have filled this value as 1.119 kilonewton. So lever arm will be lever arm will be the position of the dead load. You can see the dead load is going to enter the center of this 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 value. So this value I have when I go to this lever arm I'm talking about. So dead load is going to act at this position. So when I take this lever arm, so this is going to act at 325. When you subtract this 50, this overhang from 375, which is the total one, so I get this as 325. So plus 1200. So this makes it to 1, uh, 1525. So this value will be 1525 rather. 1525. You can make a correction over here. 25 can be taken as 1.5. So this will increase some one uh, this moment as. 178.5 so you can multiply these two values to get this value then second component is horizontal force due to temperature and shrinkage so that we have calculated so you just go through your this value so horizontal force due to strain in link conduction at bearing level is 4 kN so fill up this table correctly you can write down the forces and then you can feel these forces so 4, this is going to act at this bearing level, the horizontal force, this horizontal force I have distance of 5.6, 5.6 minus 1.3, so this gives me 4.3. So lever arm, kindly fill these values very correctly, the vertical forces as well as the horizontal forces, their lever arms. Then only you can calculate the values of the vertical movements and the horizontal movements. So I have two conditions, span loaded conditions and span unloaded conditions. So first we are discussing the span unloaded conditions. So third component is active earth pressure. You have calculated the earth, active earth pressure as 140. The lever arm is 232.35, that is 0.42H. So this was 0.42 of 5.6. So this gives me 329.0 as the horizontal movement. Similarly, horizontal forces due to the live load surcharge, vertical forces due to the surcharge, you can fill these values. These values are very correctly shown over here. This is 75.66 we have calculated earlier on. You can go through. Lever arm is 1.3. That is the center of 2.6 plus 1 plus 1.2. This makes it to 3.5. This you can calculate by multiplying 75.66 into 3.5. Similarly, now the self-weight of the abutment. So five parts I have taken. I have shown again these five parts. First part, second part, third part, fourth and fifth one first part this is 4.8 so it will act at 2.4 you can always calculate this value so this value will be what 4.8 let me tell you over here 4.8 into 0.75 into the unit weight of concrete that is 25 so lever arm will be at the center of 4.8 for o so this i have taken over here so this 4.8 into 0.75 into 25 and lever arm is 2.4 similarly you can go for all these areas 2 3 4 and 5 you can calculate their values take this uh, gravity uh, this uh, unit weights accordingly 2 3 4 is unit weight will be 25 for this this value this value it will be 18 
so kindly take it correctly and you can uh, use these values and find out the leverums find out their vertical forces so up till here i have taken four portions then i have taken weight on the earth slab this we have calculated this fifth fifth portion <coughs> then what we have then i have told you there are two conditions span loaded and span unloaded conditions so span unloaded conditions do you sum up these total forces that will give me total vertical force total horizontal force these are the lever arm, respective lever arms total you can calculate the moment vertical moment about o total horizontal moment about o similarly <coughs> when you consider live load that is this 70 hour loading which we have taken as 85 kN live load 85 kN per meter so this gives me acting at 1.5 i have shown you the position of live load also so this again again gives me 1.5 but this comes out to be 1.525 to be exact to be exact so i have taken again 1.5 vertical force due to breaking we have calculated as 4.1 will again act at 1.4 1.5 rather then horizontal forces due to breaking we have calculated this is going to act at the bearing level again 4.3 so you can calculate the moment add these moments so you get the total horizontal force vertical force total horizontal force total vertical horizontal vertical moment total horizontal moment so after tabulating this table this whole table then we can go for your checks first check is check for overturning so check for overturning i have again two conditions as earlier talked about span loaded conditions overturning moment will be my 623.224 that is in the table which you have calculated when you see this table so overturning moment will be 623 uh, 23.224 horizontal moment is going to cause your overturning and vertical moment mv is going to talk consider uh, should be should be considered as your resisting moment so resisting moment is 170 again this value is kilonewton meters so when you compare this factor of safety resisting moment divided by the overturning moment gives me some fraction some value that comes out to be 2.82 so this overturning moment should be more than 2 if it is so then your conditions are for safe conditions then i have talked about the location of this resultant which should lie between 1/6 of the of the span of the uh, you can say middle portion for that i need to calculate x0 x0 is given by mv minus mh by b so this comes out to be 1.6 knot this is in meters then eccentricity of the resultant e maximum is given by b by 6 you all know that this comes out to be 0.8 meters so e in our case will be b by 2 minus x0 calculated over here and this gives me a value of 0.78 so this is less than 0.8 and hence this section is safe for tension that is your the uh, it can be explained in this manner that if i have this as my b so i will have three portions b by 3 b by 3 b by 3 this is my central portion so it says if your eccentricity is b by 6 so b by 3 center of middle section of b by 3 so i have two sections again this is b by 6 this is b by 6 your eccentric yani your load should lie in this section if the load is resultant is beyond this section there will be some uh, tensile moments in this section and that will lead to your failure in the tensile values because that value should be more than positive value can cannot be in tensile nature <clears throat> let's see so this is this and second case is span unloaded conditions overturning moment is 572 again from your table overturning moments is your 572.524 resisting moment is 1625.17 repeat the exercise calculate the factor of safety calculate x not check for e if the things are safe then only you can say for the safe conditions then then you have check for the stresses at the base for this 
we are going to take on the span loaded conditions this is the severe case for uh, against the span unloaded conditions total downward forces is 6699.54 which is can be denoted as p so stresses are given by p by b you all know that 1 plus 6e by b when you substitute that you get two values 287.85 when you use minus you get it as 3.64 287.85 maximum pressure should be less than 350 that is the permissible stress and minimum pressure should be more than zero that is it should not be negative if it is negative then there is tension in that your case is a failure case you have to increase your section <clears throat> then lastly we are going to check it for sliding for checking the sliding forces now again go to the table the sliding force is the total horizontal force you can see over here the total horizontal force is as 236.63 kN. So this is the sliding force. Resisting force will be your vertical force. The factor of safety is here. Uh, this is 0.6%, 60% of the total vertical force. So this gives me 41972 kN. So when you take the ratio, I get this as 1.77, should be more than 1.5. If the value is so, the conditions are safe. So that means you have to check your the optimum adequate section for first for your the check uh, the uh, check for stability for overturning for both the conditions loaded as well as unloaded conditions. Then you have to check it for stresses. Then you have to check it for sliding. So there are three checks to be performed in this case. If all the three are successful under the safe conditions, only then your adequation is and section is adequate and you can go for the section. Thank you.